Hi folks, Dave here, AF5DN, and today I want to show you a little radio, handheld radio, this is ham, it's by HYS. Let me carry this over to the bench and I'll give you a little bit uh, closer look. Okay, when you uh, first receive the HYS dual band transceiver, this is the uh, the, the box that you receive. It's a pretty nice looking little box and shows the radio and gives an overview of all of the specifications. And if we take a look inside real quick, you'll see this is how it comes packaged. There's your uh, manual. And uh, it's written pretty good. You can understand that pretty well. Charge base. Here's the AC adapter there. Um, this is the uh, belt clip. Okay. There's your uh, lithium ion battery and the radio itself. So this is the, uh, the antennas up here. This is the way it looks uh, in the box when you first open it up. Okay, this is the uh, radio after it's been unboxed and uh, assembled. Here's the uh, regular household um, AC adapter, nothing particularly special about that. There's the charger base. It does have a LED here in the front and uh, the LED turns red when it's charging and uh, green when it's fully charged. And it's pretty simple. It just plugs in there. I don't think anybody can figure that out. Okay, let me go over the radio itself. <clears throat> the antenna um, does just screw on. That will come in handy a little bit later. I'll show you some things about that. The radio itself, on this side here, you get your push to talk button. This one is semi-programmable. All right, now I have it programmed to initiate a scan function. The buttons on the front, it will do DTMF tones. Here's your menu, exit, scroll up and down. And uh, there's some other functions here, like your radio. Uh, you can do an alarm function. Uh, this is a key lock, you know, keep you from actually accidentally hitting keys when you didn't want to. This side over here, you have a port underneath this cover for uh, either a headset, uh, external microphone. Um, you can also put in the uh, the programming uh, cable, USB programming cable. Here's the back of the radio, and you'll see that the uh, one of the things I really like about this is this is a metal belt clip. Okay, it's not a plastic belt clip, and it actually attaches to the radio itself not the battery pack the way some of these little handhelds are. The problem with that is is that sometimes putting the stress on the battery pack itself will pop the battery out when you don't want it to or it's on your belt clip and you go to pull the, bat the, the radio off your belt clip you get the radio and the battery stays on your belt. Uh, so this one is not that way and uh, this is just a little pull you just pull like that pops right out Okay, and you can see that belt clip stays right there on the radio. Okay, and there's your uh, your battery. Okay, that's when it's in the charging base. And there's your connectors when it's in the radio. So, sliding it in, boom, it's there. Very easy. Okay, the uh, uh, let me turn this on. I've got the volume way down here. When it comes on, it'll show you your initial screen. It is dual band, so you see both frequencies there. Uh, now these are screens are programmable. There's three colors that you can program the screen, and you can pick what it is. Uh, transmit could be uh, blue. Transmit could be uh, purple. Um, I think one of them is red, and you can program which one does which function. Uh, programming is pretty simple. You just hit the menu function and it brings up the screen. It gives you the uh, the reference designator, but it also tells you which menu screen that is. And then you just scroll through. Okay. I'm not going to go through all these in this one. Here's your offset, standard offset, auto talk. Okay. Push to talk. Some of these are for using the DTMF functions, ring time, A and I. There's your A and I function. 
beep. You can turn the beep on and off. Right, let me turn this up and you'll see what I'm saying. There's your beep on and off. Okay, so programming is pretty easy. If you know the number, like if you know you want to go to menu option number four, okay, you just hit menu four and it jumps straight to it. Menu four, there we go. And that's your transmit high and low. Here's your four. I don't know if you can see that. Let me hit that again. The four is right there in the corner. Uh, you also have your little battery indicator. Now there's a lot of other little lights come popping up in here depending upon uh, uh, what functions there are. You'll see a plus or minus sign for an offset. Uh, you'll see a little high-low for whether or not your what your transmitter power is, is set for. Uh, so all all in all, that is uh, that's the basic radio. And like I say, let me show you the manual here. Okay, this is your manual. And what I'm talking about here is let me just find one of these. Okay, here's a description um, of your display and all of the different little things that may pop up there and what they indicate. Okay. I'm not your on Vox, there's your battery. Uh, this is on wide band or narrow band. Um, there's your key lock display. Okay, so the manual is actually pretty good. It tells you what all those little things are. I'll get back over here to the programming function. I just randomly picked a page. And you can see this uh, menu number, menu 22. Here's menu 25, 26. Uh, these are, let me see if I can find a real easy one here. Okay, there's that number four, transmit power selection. Okay, so between the on-screen this up here, between the on-screen menu, uh, that is your squelch level. If I wanted to go to this Transmit power section number four. Okay, I just hit the menu four, and now I'm on four transmit power, and you can see it's on high. Okay, looks like I was picking up some background noise there for a minute. <clears throat> that does give you uh, a brief overview of the specifications here in the back of the book. Tells you what your uh, your squelch tones are, your DCS tones. Uh, here's some very very basic information on the different frequency ranges it'll do, how many memory channels you have, your output power. Uh, this is a F. This of course FM, uh, one watt and four watts. Okay. Uh, as you saw that transmit power, you had a high low. One watt would be low. Four watt would be high. All right. Now, the other thing I want to show you, this is, I don't know if it's anything that I would particularly use, but it is there, may come in handy, is there's a little radio button. And when you hit that radio button, come on, now let me get off this frequency here, picking up some background stuff. It goes into regular... Uh, what I would call broadcast FM uh, okay, and you can scroll up here other outcomes of classical liberal theology was that it had a tendency depending upon who was articulating it it had a tendency so if you're bored and you don't have radio and you want to listen to your favorite uh, you know, mu music channels this does have a little FM radio built into it which is kind of an interesting little feature okay, let me show you this side over here now I particularly like this function. Some of the other handheld radios, um, they do not have a screw like this. But what they will have uh, is this door will just pop down. Okay, this is not overly difficult. I'm, my big old chubby fingers are just making it look difficult. All right, there we go. All right. 
some of the radios that are like this, this radio will pop down and then you have to pivot it out of the way and it's always sticking out. Like it's either always sticking out like this or, or it's always sticking out like that. And I like this one because you can take the door off and get it out of the way. Now, so I use a, uh, a handheld mic. I'll show you that in just a second. I didn't bring it up with me. I'll go grab it. And it plugs in here and so it makes it a little bit cleaner to have this little door that can get out of the way. Now this uh, first jack is for your uh, microphone only. If you use a little handset, uh, like a little you know key microphone or an earbud, I'll show you a couple of those that will work with this. Uh, and this one also, this one down here is used in conjunction with the low one for programming. Now I have programmed this uh, on Windows XP and Windows 7 using this uh, USB programming cable. Uh, these are fairly standard cables. They work with the uh, Osan, uh, they work with Kenwood, they work with a variety of, of different radios. They're fairly generic. So the, uh, the USB drivers for Windows XP and Windows 7 are readily available. They're on my website, um, af5dn.com for you to download if you need it. As well as the programming software. And you can see it just plugs right in there. And you jack that into your computer, turn it on, and then once you've programmed the software, you can download all the memory functions into the radio. Okay. Now the radio can be used for other functions besides ham. Um, say for example, you want to program this for FRS and GMRS stations because you can control the wattage. You could put it down to one watt and program it for, uh, for some of the other bands. And uh, you can set a what's called a mode password. And the way that happens, like right now if I turn this on, <laughs> I'm not sure you can see that, but if you can, this is in frequency mode. It's actually showing the exact frequency uh, that I'm that I'm on. Okay. Now, one of the options is is to put this into channel mode, and how you how you do that is you hold down the menu button when you turn this on. Okay. Now it's asking for a password, so I'm going to change the mode. Very simple password in here, just for demonstration. And now I'm in channel mode. And I've got a kilocycle club uh, repeater programmed in there. And as you see, as I scroll up and down, I get, I get channel names, um, not frequencies. And that's handy because you could you could set it like this, give it to somebody. They can't program some in some frequency that you don't want them on, uh, but then you can go back uh, at a later date and reprogram it yourself just by re re redoing that process. I'm back in frequency mode. All right, now let me talk about the antenna and the power rating. I have a couple other radios and one that is very similar to this uh, is the Osan. It's it's spelt with a W but it's pronounced Osan. And it's very similar to this. It has like one other function and you can scroll through the channels with another knob instead of just using the up and down buttons. I don't find that to be a problem for me because it's dual band. I usually leave it set on one frequency and scan on the other, or one channel and let it scan on the other channel. So on the Osan radio, I really don't even use that other button, or knob, I guess I should say, that's up here at the top. Now I have an external antenna, and I've connected both this one and the Osan radio. Now, the Osan radio is actually a little bit more expensive than that. To my uh, watt meter SWR meter and when it says it puts out four watts this one now I'm not saying every one of these radios but this one here actually puts out a little bit more than four watts this one's about four and a half watts where the Osan is rated at five but it was putting out less than this one right at four watts 
So the Osan did not do as good on this meter as this radio did. Okay, so how do you get from this little radio, this little antenna to these jacks or to an external antenna? Well, there's a variety of different ways to do that. Like I say, that unscrews and this is an SMA connector. Now there's a couple of different things you can do. Uh, this little adapter here is very inexpensive and it has the SMA on one side, BNC on the other, and they just screw right in there. Okay, and from that you can use a, a BNC jumper. Here's your PL259 to BNC adapter. Okay, so you can take this into into a watt meter or into some other uh, external antenna and to get away from this little guy here. I will tell you, and I think any ham operator will tell you, that the, the antenna is the most limiting factor on these handheld radios. A, tran a uh, repeater that I cannot hit using this radio and this antenna, can connecting this to the permanently attached radio to my Jeep, the same radio can easily hit that repeater. So your antenna is your most limiting factor. Now there's other options. Um, Okay, there's that little one. They also make just a little, a little gender changer. It's kind of small with my big old chunky fingers. But it just has your female to female. And that'll go in there like that. Okay, so now once you've done that, here's a little different cable. Okay, same thing, it's got a male SMA and a BNC already on it. So then you can screw that on there. And, uh, okay, there's another option. Okay, so there's a lot of little, there's a lot of ways that you can improve the performance of these little guys by using external antennas uh, with just some very simple little adapters. These are not complicating by them anywhere. Yeah, most of these you can get it. This one you may not be able to get at Radio Shack, but this you can get, clearly you can get at Radio Shack. This one I picked up at Radio Shack. Now one of the other options is, this is an aftermarket, let me kind of plug into the thing here. This is an aftermarket antenna by Comet. Uh, you can see the difference in the length of these antennas. This will not quite, uh, well I shouldn't say, it, it, it is definite, a definite improvement over the factory antenna. It's not quite as good as the fixed antenna using something like this uh, to go to an automobile, um, a fixed antenna or a home base fixed antenna. Okay, so there we go. That's your basic uh, radio, your HYS dual band, 2 meter, 70 centimeter radio. Uh, I have been playing with this one for a while. I'm quite impressed with it. It does a, it does a really great job. Okay. Thank you very much for watching. Well, there's a, an overview, an overlook of the HYS radio. I uh, hope you enjoyed that review and I think it's a great little radio uh, for just about anybody and I think if you pick one up you'll be happy using it. Thanks a lot. I'm Dave AF5DN.